Today, I want to show you some basics about the new Pulsar Dual LFO. Despite its depth and complexity, Pulsar is actually the ideal place for people new to modular synthesis and LFOs to get started. An LFO is one of the fundamental parts in analog synthesizers. It stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, and it's basically an electrical waveform that repeats over and over, and usually pretty slowly. When you listen to music, you'll notice that it isn't very static. Sounds evolve over time. From Leslie speakers on an organ to the vibrato of a guitarist's finger, musicians employ tricks and tools to spice up sounds that would otherwise get dull fast. Pulsar has two LFOs, which can do some pretty complex stuff, but let's learn the most basic LFO techniques first. Here I have a simple pad on Thor. It doesn't do much on its own, so let's create a Pulsar. Pulsar doesn't auto-wire itself to Thor. We do that ourselves by connecting a control voltage, or CV cable, from Pulsar's LFO1 output to the amp level input on Thor. Right away, you can hear Pulsar's made a big difference with a pretty extreme volume tremolo. The speed is determined by the rate knob from slow to fast. The level knob controls how much of an impact the LFO has. For wirings like this one, you can think of the level knob like a wet-dry knob on a reverb or a delay device. It blends the LFO signal into the sound. You can also choose the shape of your LFO waveform. The picture shown will give you a pretty good indication of what waveform shape the LFO will generate. Let's put some drums underneath to give this more of a groove. You can hear the drummer has a little more swing in his beat than Pulsar's electronically perfect square wave. In order to make our pulsing pad swing with the drummer, I'll turn up the shuffle knob so our square wave gets a little funky. First, I'll exaggerate the setting so you can hear the result. For a hip-hop beat like this, I'll set it closer to 56%. I like this. We've taken our static pad and given it pulsing movement. Since Pulsar has two LFOs, let's hook up LFO2 to do something else. We'll wire LFO2 to control the filter 1 frequency of Thor. This time I'll connect the CV cable using one of Pulsar's inverted CV jacks. This will flip the CV output, so instead of going up and then coming down, our signal goes down and then comes up. I'll also adjust the CV trim knob on the back of Thor, so that the CV signal doesn't sweep the full range of Thor's filter knob, but rather a smaller portion of it. Our once static pad now sounds like this. There's a lot more you can do with control voltage and Pulsar to control all sorts of things in the Reason Rack. Pulsar can even be set up so LFO1 and LFO2 interact and control each other. But since this is a getting started tutorial, we'll leave it there and get on to Pulsar's other big trick. Making its own synth sounds. Remember at the beginning when I said that LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator? Well, what would happen if we sped up that low frequency oscillation so much that it moved into frequencies above 20 Hz that we can hear as pitch? If I connect a pulsar to a mix channel and turn off the tempo sync button so I can increase the rate well beyond the tempo of the song, you'll start to hear the result. Pretty cool, right? Okay, okay, all right, chill. It does get cooler, trust me on this one. First, I'll turn the level all the way down to pacify the angry mob. Stop! Now, let's turn the rate knob all the way up so our synth is in tune with our song. I'll also turn the keyboard follow knob all the way up and turn the level knob on the LFO1 envelope section to about 3 o'clock. I'll right click and create a track for my pulsar so I can play it with my MIDI keyboard. And there you go. Pulsar is making its own sounds. So what is actually happening here? The envelope section is responding to key presses on my MIDI keyboard and turning up the LFO1 level each time I press a note. The keyboard follow knob is then changing the speed or rate of the LFO, and since our LFO rate is up into the range of human hearing, 
those rate changes become different pitches when you play up and down the keyboard. Now, let's coolify the sound a little more, shall we? I'll turn the envelope's release down all the way so the notes don't ring out, and I'll change the waveform of LFO1 to a square wave. Now we're sounding more like an analog bass. Remember that shuffle knob that gave our pad some groove and swing? On a square wave setting, and with a rate this fast, that same shuffle knob alters the square wave to become what's known as a pulse width modulation waveform. I prefer to think of it as that super cool knob that makes my synth bass sound aggressive, dirtier, and thicker. So let's put a bass line in our song. Now let's add a little more analog character to the sound by sending it through the Synapse Audio AF4 analog filter. Since it's not being used for my synth sound, I can even use LFO2 as a separate LFO to control the cutoff frequency and resonance on the filter. I'll keep Tempo Sync on and set the rate to a nice slow 4 bar long waveform. And that's it. You've just built your first analog modular synthesizer complete with a pulse width modulation oscillator, a keyboard tracking envelope generator, and a low pass filter being modulated by a sine wave LFO. Sounds pretty complicated, right? Well, you should feel proud. Memorize that list of stuff and brag to all your friends about how smart you are. You can even print out this certificate and hang it on your wall like a doctor's office. Or show it to your mom so she stops bugging you about finishing your education. Of course, there's tons more that Pulsar can do. We're just scratching the surface here. But I definitely think you should check out the many Pulsar patches that are included with it to see more complex and interesting routing techniques. Most importantly, don't be afraid to experiment and make some great music. Good luck! Yeah.